Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. And this is my old New Holland 514 manure spreader. Kind of new to me. I bought it a year and a half ago and experienced the usual, what I'll call break in problems with it. So I got to get to fixing those. Spreading manure is essential to keeping fertility on our farm. And with this spreader, I spread probably 40 to 50 loads a year. I'm going to need it next spring. First problem is that this deck is about ready to fall apart. And this metal up here that's meant to protect the front of the deck is all bent up from the apron chain coming off. So I'm gonna tear this deck off. Some people may just cover it with a sheet of metal or something, but I'm not comfortable leaving this rotten wood under here. We'll take it off. Shouldn't be that difficult, I hope. It's rotten enough. Yep. I expect this deck is original. It looks like only half inch thick boards with a funny tongue and groove on them. Funny profile, not a replacement. Now that we got one board off, we can use the crossbars to pry it. Well, that was easy. And here I thought I was gonna have to grind the screw heads off. Nope. I guess the good news here is these crossbars seem pretty solid. The axle, which these are known for rusting out at, is okay. This thing's not, not quite as good. But this front piece here is thinner sheet metal and it's in need of replacement. We can cut it off and put in a new one. At one time, these lumps of metal on the crossbars were self-tapping screws. This front cross piece has got to come right off and grind off the weld, maybe. I can reuse those nuts. Guess I shouldn't have cut off these screws in the driveway. I should have done it in my new shop. <laughs> Someday. Looking at the parts catalog, I believe this model spreader was made between 1986 and 1990, and New Holland had a program at that time where if a side rotted out they would replace it under warranties. I think this side's been replaced. That side is not. And I think the warranty only applied to the original owner. It moved? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to endeavor to remove the axle that the apron turns on. This pair of plates you see here is a shear plate. This is a shear pin in here, a shear bolt. And one of these plates is keyed into the axle and the other one's keyed into the gear that drives it. And they both stay in there. The axle should slide right through the gearbox and out. That's the plan anyway.
Hmm. I'm sure that that ear is sleeved all the way through the gear case here. Yeah. I don't think so, but we can try. Just to say we tried. Ah, frustration when things won't come apart. Let me explain what I'm trying to do here. The shaft that I've been working on runs in a sleeve straight through the gearbox and continues out of the gearbox right here all the way across. And on the shaft are the apron sprockets that pull the apron chain back to move the manure back to the beaters. And these sprockets are very worn out. I'll put up a photo of what a new one looks like so you can see how much the wear is. They need to be replaced and they're keyed onto the shaft. There's a square keyway in the shaft and that's how they fit on with a set screw. So I need to get these off the shaft and everything's rusted together because it's a manure spreader. I even tried drilling out the set screw here and it is harder than hard with a brand new drill bit would barely touch it. Therefore, I thought that if I could get the shaft out, I could put it on the bench and really work on the sprockets and it'd be a lot easier to take them off, but I'm going to plan B now. That's a heck of a lot better than I thought they would look inside. Barely any rust, but that key, that would have been a pain to try and drive off, I think, if I drove it off this way. As far as the shaft itself, there's the key right there, so I'm going to have to get that out. You can see how much the shaft is rusted here where it's high. The bearing sits over here and it's worn over here, but most of the shaft is just fine. I. I don't have any problems reusing it, especially considering a new one is $450. Spray this with some PB Blaster and let it sit for overnight. Then try and take the key out. She's coming. This one's about the same. Not a lot of corrosion. Not even a lot of corrosion in the keyway here. A few days have passed and the weather has gone south, or is it north? I don't know, it's cold and it's rainy. So I backed the manure spreader into the machinery barn here to continue work on it. I want to take a look at this axle because these spreaders are known for rusting out and, and a wheel falls off. This end plate's nice and thick, but this hat here is where it rusts out. This side's in very good shape. In fact, some of the metal up on top still got paint on it. So I don't think I need to do any work here. The underside of these axles, this is the hat here. And then there's just this, I don't know what it is, eighth inch or less plate here to reinforce where it crosses the frame. And this is where the axle supports the frame. It doesn't look bad either. Still got a lot of life left in it. And then inside the box where that hat comes into the side, it is rusted, not all the way through, but mostly just on this bottom flange here, this and this look fine and that looks pretty good too more than one way to take this wheel off. This cap is whipped. Rusted up. Yep. 
I was going to repack these wheel bearings anyway, so had to come apart eventually. Unlike the other wheel, this one was rusted glued together, hub to rim. Uh, this one doesn't look as good as the other one did. There's a hole. This is rotted out down here. This piece of blue twine didn't come from this farm. We use orange. Ugh. What do we see? Well, rotted out down the corner there. This plate here is fine. That's thin. That's rotted out. That's thin. Inside the box it's rotted down there. Yeah, on the other side it's rotted there. That's real thin. And underneath where all this plate is, there's nothing left of it. Yeah, it's heaved up in here. This plate is quarter inch steel. I can't get a thickness on this because it's so rotted out. But over on this side, at least it looks like it was eighth inch to begin with. Hmm. I'm going to take these front sprockets off next. And for some reason there's two different size nuts on these. Here's the sprocket. <laughs> the sprocket itself isn't too badly worn, not like the rear ones were, but the inside of it is very worn. No grease fitting. Somebody's definitely messed with this one because it's got regular bolts instead of carriage bolts in it with 11 16 inch nuts. Weird. Where are you? Well, this one's a carriage bolt. Huh. So what we have is two different style sprockets. This one's got a U-shaped mounting plate on it. This one's a straight mounting plate. This sprocket is centered on its mounting plate, but this one is not. Although I think they ride in the same plane. This is going to be tons of fun. Oh boy. I had to scratch around in here to see what was what. The axle extends into here and then there's a gusset at the end. That makes me feel a little bit better about strength. After lots of surgery, I'll show you what I'm left with. I cut out all the rottenness on the bottom of this into here. Same on the inside of the box. Cut all that bottom stuff out. But underneath is where the tail is to be told. I cut this whole plate out here that was all rotten. Cut the sides up here. All the really thin stuff is gone. I have some angles here that I'm going to use as guides. And I'm going to shim up these guides with 8th inch steel. 
set right there. Then I've got some pieces of eighth inch steel that I cut to fit in here. Same thing on the inside of the frame. Two plates, cut to fit, shimmed up an eighth an inch. Using a wood clamp because it's all I got. I made a plate for the bottom. Put that in. What I've done here is duplicated what was originally there. Tack it into place. Might as well just weld this whole thing up while I'm in here. It's a splice plate on each side for the bottom flange of this hat to hook the new to the old. Hillary came out to inspect the work. Does it pass? Of course it passes. That's a lot of work. I still got a lot more yeah, to do. Yeah. I'm going to reinforce this joint with steel angles that I cut on both sides and on both inside and outside. This little ski goes on here to keep the chain from hitting the apron chain when it's on the underside and coming back up to the front. These two guides keep the apron chain from binding up on anything as it travels under the wagon and comes back up toward the front. And they're worn out. Oh look, it's snowing. First snow of the year. Came out pretty good. There's a nut that goes in between here on each bolt. Well, you need to be more cooperative. You know, you keep falling. I'm just gonna. Keep trying until it comes together. 
There we go. And I'm not under this one. Big nut, just a spacer. Needs a little bit of fine adjustment, I think. To bring it square to the angle. Looks good. I gotta straighten this angle out before I put the front piece back in. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. This piece of angle here is the new front angle for that thin one that I tore off. And it gets this kind of skid that I formed up to keep the apron chain from catching on the center of it. I drilled this front angle and drilled the side here and I'm going to bolt this on. Why? Why not? And there we go. One new front cross piece. I think I have all the metal working done now and the next thing I want to do is get all the loose rust and paint cleaned off of it. Kind of a big job. Having finished the frame repairs, I put the wheels back on the spreader, pulled it into the shop here where I have heat, and took the wheels back off of it. Everything under here is repaired now. I rebuilt all that end of course, including the underside, and replaced that angle up front. I also tore the shield off the front. It was rusty and nasty, and it went outside the shop door to keep the bush company. The next step is painting, and before painting, I'm gonna put this on, it's core seal. It's a rust converter. It converts iron oxide to iron tannate, I think. It's got tannic acid in it, and it's also got a primer in it mixed in. It actually converts the rust. So it's pretty cool stuff. I'm not trying to make this manure spreader look new again. I just wanna preserve its useful life. So obviously we got spots like that, but I'm not going to worry about them. This stuff reacts with the rust and turns black. That means that it's doing its job. And if you paint it over paint, it doesn't do that reaction and it actually won't harden and then you got to wipe it off with a cloth before you paint. You get the idea.
It took exactly one cupful of this stuff, not a whole lot. I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours in the heated shop and then we'll be back with paint. It's been 24 hours, it's time to paint. We're gonna radically change the appearance of this old thing. The rust converter dried black and it is tough stuff. I can't scratch it with my fingernail and remove it. Good base coat. I'm gonna to stick to the original New Holland red and yellow colors, yellow for the frame, red for the rest of the spreader and I'm using spray paint for the yellow because I don't need very much of it. For the red, I bought a gallon of this Magic Premixed New Holland red color. Why did I choose this? I chose it because it's cheap and I chose it because it's readily available in a premixed red color. It's an oil-based paint. It takes a long time to dry. You only put on one coat in a day. I have used this paint before. I painted the H and the Super A with it. The problems with it is, are, as I said, it dries slowly. The other problem is it'll fade when it's in direct sunlight. I don't expect to have this spreader in direct sunlight very much. I only use it for a few weeks out of the year. The rest of the time it'll be stored in the barn. So it ought to work okay. I used about a can and a half of paint just going around the frame here and on the inside too. I didn't paint all the yellow stuff. This mess in here, I didn't bother with that. But it's definitely gonna need another coat tomorrow. Now for this stuff, it looks nicely pre-mixed, which really surprises me. I love red. I'm gonna try it with this little brush and see how it goes on. This is a three inch brush. I have some four inchers though. I like it. I guess one of the advantages to using oil paint is it dries slow enough where the brush strokes will flow together more. When I rebuilt the new idea manure spreader, the old wooden box one that I got, it was quite a ordeal because it's all wood. I bought all the pressure treated lumber and then I brought it in the shop here and let it dry for at least six months because it comes coarse pressure treated really wet. And then I tongue and grooved it with a router. I cut tongue and grooves in it. And then I painted all the boards all the way around before I installed them on the spreader to make sure that they were fully protected. And 10 years later, that spreader still got most all of its paint on it. The only place it's gone is where like the apron chain runs on the deck. So painting does hold up on these things if you clean them out when you're done with them. This bumpy steel where it was rust pitted really soaks up the paint. This paint can be sprayed too. I sprayed the tractors that I did with it. They make a reducer and a hardener for it. It still takes forever to dry. And I think if I sprayed this, I'd probably have to put on two coats. But with a brush, I think I can get away with one coat on the red. It seems to be covering pretty good. This rusty side is done. Front's done. I didn't plan on painting this, but how can I let that stand? It doesn't match. Yep, I couldn't let that go. Have to paint it. The inside is done. Used nearly a half gallon of paint on it. I guess the question is, what am I going to do on the outsides here? I really don't want to repaint the whole thing. I don't know if I can just touch it up where it's rusty and say good enough. I don't know if I can live with that or not. We'll give it a try. Am I all done painting? I don't know. Of course the whole inside is painted here. I got some paddles to put on here, new ones that I'll paint too. I'm gonna wait to paint that shaft that the sprockets go on till I get the new sprockets. On the sides, I tried to paint wherever it was rusty, so I didn't paint this. I painted that, painted all that. This is not painted. On the front, the hitch is painted, but not really anything else. This side's the same deal as the other side. I painted along the bottom there where it was rusty and at the bottom of these and around the axle and that's it. I don't know, my original intent was just to paint the rusty areas to keep them from rusting more, but there's so little left to paint, just really these sides here and the business on the front. Should I just paint the whole thing? I don't know. If I paint the whole thing, I want to get a set of decals, the New Holland decals. I don't know if I can find those or not. So it's something to think about. 
This seems like a good place to end the video. It's been a lot of days of work. And it's probably a pretty long video already, so I'll do a part two where we'll install the deck, the sprockets, the apron chain, the replacement paddles for the back, a new belt on the front, gotta put the wheels back on, inspect the wheel bearings and the wheel seals. It'll be fun. I really get into big projects like this, especially when the weather turns cold. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time.